What's going on YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to record and play audio in a React Native application using Expo. The example I have here is this one with the iOS simulator I'm using. To simply click this button and it's going to record audio and once I click stop, it's going to play that audio back to me. So just showing that for demonstration purposes before we get into it. Testing, 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 testing. So by the end of it, you will be able to build exactly this and I'll be walking through the code of how I built it. So enough being said, let's jump into the code. Okay, so jumping into the code for my application, it's actually pretty simple and I just did this from a base Expo app. So I just did Expo init and I jumped straight into the app component and I just started coding and the code is all here. It's only 129 lines of code with some spacing. So it's pretty simple. So we'll just run through it really quick. At the beginning here, you can see I have some imports in this code. I have fonts awesome and I have these other React Native imports just to simply style my button. So I use the touchable opacity. So that in particular, I wanna talk about that one because that's a pretty cool library you can use to wrap around other components and simply allow them to be touchable. So I, I wrap that around my fonts awesome component to make it nice as you saw in the previous screen with that red outline and the, the whites in the middle. Now other more important libraries here are the use effect and use state libraries. So if you're familiar with React, you probably are familiar with these libraries. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about these libraries, but these are pretty much to manage the state of some parameters I have in my application. You can see these three states. And I'm using use effect to do some certain functions at the beginning of the first rendering of my components, which I'll talk about here in a second. And of course, other libraries I have are the audio library to record audio and the file system library to manage some things I want to do in the file system. I want to save the audio URI to the file system and create directories on the file system. So the file system from Expo file system allows you to do that very easily. Now jumping into the functional component I have here app, you can see I have these three states which I'll be using in the application. Recording is the actual recording object. Recording status is if I'm recording or I'm not recording. So this is just a state to tell me if I'm recording or not. And finally, I have the audio permission, which just tells me if the user has given me audio permission from their device to start recording because you absolutely need this to start recording on the user's device. Now jumping into more specifics of the use effect component. Now in that use effect component, I'm just doing something upon the first rendering of the application. And what I'm doing is I'm just getting the permission from the user to record audio and I'm setting audio permission as the permission I get from the user. So I'm using the simple library, the audio library, and I'm using the function request permission async, which is the function you need to get permission from the user. And it's returning a promise. And in that promise, part of it is the granted property. And this granted property is a Boolean that tells you whether the user has given you permission or not. If yes, it'll be true. If not, it'll be false. So simple as that. And I'm just throwing this in an asynchronous function and I'm running that asynchronous function in the use effect upon the first render. And finally, what I have here is just some simple cleanup upon the first render. So if there is a recording, there happens to be some recording before I start the application, I just clean it up and I just do stop recording. And the stop recording is actually a function down here. So another thing I have is this asynchronous function. So this is there's two main asynchronous functions here, the start recording and the stop recording asynchronous functions. In the first start recording, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is the function that when you click the button, it initiates this function. So what it's doing is it's saying, if I have audio permission, what I'm going to do is I'm going to await set audio mode async. So you actually need to set this audio mode for iOS users or else you will not have permission on iOS devices to record audio. So keep that in mind, this is just for iOS. And we, if we have permission granted, we should be able to set the mode async properly. Now, once we have that, we just want to create a new recording by simply new audio dot recording. And we're console logging that we're starting the recording just for debugging purposes. And finally, in that library, we can purport, prepare to record async using recording options, preset high quality. Now, in most cases you want to do high quality, but in some cases, if you want to save some memory or you don't need high quality audio, you can use uh, low quality, which is fine. But I think in most cases, high quality is what you want. So that's just preparing the parameters before we start the recording. And finally, to start the actual recording, we just say new recording dot async. So it's really as simple as that to start recording. So you have the permission, you prepare it and you just start the recording. And I just set the recording status as recording to use this later on for stopping the recording, okay? So the next function I have is the stop recording function. So I'm saying if the recording status is recording, what I want to do is I want to do all of this code here, which is pretty much stop the recording and play back the recording. 
And what it's doing is, in the first step, it's actually stopping the recording itself. And once you await the recording is stopped, you should get a recording URI from the recording.getURI. And then finally, once I have that recording URI, I actually want to save the URI on the file system as opposed to keeping it as a URI. So I devised this little file system saving here that creates a file name based on the time. And I create a directory in the recordings directory. And I simply move the recording URI to the file system in the recordings directory with that file name. So I'm just moving the URI to the file system just for my own purposes. You don't have to do that. You can play it straight from the URI, but I'm just doing it from the file system. Now, simply once you have that saved, you can create a playback object by using new audio.sound, and you can just load that sound from the file that I just saved and play the sound. And if you did everything correctly, you should hear the sound as we saw at the beginning of this video. And we're just gonna reset the states, set recording and set recording status as null and stopped. And if anything happens, we have catch error, of course, and same thing with the last function as well. Now to string it together, we have this handle recording button press. So this function happens every time you press the actual button. So if you are recording, it's going to call the stop recording function. Otherwise, it's going to call the start recording function. So that's pretty straightforward. And then at the end here, what we have is the component, the, the styling component itself, or the, the HTML component, I should say. And we just have the touchable opacity with fonts awesome. And once you click that touchable opacity, it's going to trigger this handle record button press, which based on the states of your application will either stop or start the recording. And we have some other styling stuff here, which I'm not gonna go into too much detail about. You can style this however you want. You can create even a nice icon that has a little uh, audio symbol in there, whatever you like. And that's pretty much the whole premise of the application. So if you go ahead and run all this with Expo, so I'm just gonna do Expo start. So I just typed in Expo start there. Let me just drag this up so you could see. So I'm just gonna click yes. So it should start running. We can open an iOS simulator just by clicking I if you have an iOS simulator available. And then sometimes what I noticed with Expo is, I read about this online, is that this library with the iOS simulator can be kind of buggy. So sometimes it actually doesn't record and play the audio properly. And that's not your fault. That's just some bugs in the application. So what I noticed is when that does happen, I just close the simulator by exiting out of this, by stopping the server and closing the, the iOS simulator app and starting again, it should work. I read about this online. There's some forums discussing this and this is an ongoing issue. So don't be startled if you actually copy this code and you go ahead and run your Expo app and there is no audio playing back. Another thing you want to do to make sure that doesn't happen is you want to increase the volume in your app. So you can actually increase the volume here by just going to, let's see, I think it's um, device audio output or increase volume. And you could just increase the volume in the app as you see there, just to, to make sure you can hear it. So that's something that can happen as well. It could be muted and you might not hear the audio from the iOS simulator. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it and it helped streamline your application. And I hope you are getting audio and playing it back in your application after watching this video. If this did help you learn absolutely anything or help you in your app, please consider like, comment, and subscribe to the channel because that would mean a lot. And there's also a lot more where that came from. Many more React Native videos and other tips to come on this channel. So you know what I say, stay tuned and thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.